at the World Economic Forum in Davos, it can't get more important than to talk to a large global company about the current state of affairs of the world and what it means for its business. And therefore, we do just that with the Premier Pharma Company in India, Dr. Reddy's. G. Prasad, Co-Chairman and Managing Director of the company, joins us right now on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. So thank you so much for taking the time and speaking to us. Thank you for having me. In this bitter cold, I must add. <laughs> well, just tell us, uh, how do you think about uh, the current business landscape? Because the world, the business in the Western Hemisphere is getting cold. What does it mean for a, a business like yours, which may have a very strong balance sheet, but faces global headwinds? So the pharmaceutical industry is in a well-positioned space uh -huh. because the demand for pharmaceuticals is not going down. On the other hand, new opportunities are opening up. Post-COVID, every country, every government is looking at improving their healthcare systems, access to medicines, access to vaccines, and in general healthcare. So I think globally, there are tailwinds for the industry, for our industry. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you would expect that even if there is a slowdown and it will be protracted one, a uh, pharma may still be able to brave it out well. well. In general, pharma has been counter-cyclic, so it has never been uh, affected by micro macroeconomics. So while a lot of uncertainties around supply chain, uh, China, and of course Russia and Ukraine, and the cost rising costs of inputs, but you know, we can handle all this. Okay. Uh, well, actually, you mentioned a couple of very important things, sir. Uh, supply chain, it's been a bugbear for the last couple of years. Are things easing at all or is it difficult to predict that right now? So, um, it, I think with China opening up, uh, the, the less concern now. As you know, a lot of uh, inputs for the pharmaceutical industry come from China for most companies. While there is a push towards reducing their dependence, in the short term, this is still heavily dominant. And that, I think, with the easing up of the Chinese uh, uh, restrictions on COVID, it should improve. Got it. Um, uh, I was attending uh, the PwC Global CEO survey yesterday. And amongst everything else, when they talked about India, they talked about pharma as the industry, which is which the world is looking forward to from a manufacturing perspective. What are your thoughts? What are your conversations with maybe some of the clients or other global companies, sir? So India is a major supplier of low-cost medicines to the world. That's without doubt a fact. Yeah. Uh, but there's more opportunity in other areas. And I think Indian companies are rising to that. Uh, like biologics, biosimilars, innovation, services. These are all growth areas for us. While the generic industry and active ingredients, India is already a force in the world. Uh, there is opportunity in innovation, services, as well as biologics. Is, is there increased chatter about this? About, about whether it Davos or otherwise? Increased investments into India or no? I mean, still some time. There, there is uh, an increased sourcing from India. Investments, I think, will follow up. Okay. Usually, you think it takes some time or a bit of a lag? Yeah, it takes time. It takes okay. a couple of years at least. You are hopeful of that happening this time around. Absolutely. Okay. A um, couple of questions around changing trends in pharma because uh, there have been uh, some developments in the last couple of years which are different than the previous decade. How do you see the next? So, the, the two or three important uh, things that mm -hmm. are happening in the industry. One is the use of artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, the new tools to help speed up that discovery. And I think that is going to have some impact on the structure of the industry going forward. The second one is the technologies in biologics are changing dramatically with a, uh, with a mix of digitalization as well as uh, genomic sciences and cell and gene therapies. The explosion in science is something we're all watching. And I think that will provide uh, a lot of momentum for change in the industry. And the third area I would say is that uh, every government is looking at strengthening the healthcare system. And that investment will ultimately Flow into the industry. Uh, touch wood. Uh, what, what about what about the PLI scheme, uh, sir? I mean, is there uh, the PLI scheme was good to encourage Indian companies to uh, reduce their dependence and also to drive further growth in the industry. So it will help the manufacturing sector. Okay. What I think is needed is something for the innovation side. Uh, how China has powered their own biotech industry. Something we can learn from. Could the budget be the uh, podium or the um, a place to do that, or, or what are the budget expectations as well? That's the second part of my question. I hope and I, and I do expect some change in how uh, the government will incentivize R&D. Okay, that is very much for the cards.
Okay. And you, and you think the budget could have some mention around that as well? I, I don't know how the budget works, but I'm hoping. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, sir. Thank you so much for talking to us and Thank all you. the best for the, for the VF. Thank you very much.